Welcome to Making a Murderer Rubber Ducky YouTube channel. All right, you guys, I'm excited about this read this week. So far, we have already um, found some information that leaves your jaw dropped open, wide open. So if you haven't had a chance to do yesterday's read, I would recommend going back and watching that. All right, so we're doing today's daily read, and we're doing the Castle Investigative Reports, pages 361 through seven, uh, 370 and part 37. Page 361, Type of Activity, Interview of Blank, Date of Activity 01-2706, at approximately 11.50 a.m. Reporting Officer, Investigator, Wendy Baldwin. On 01-2706, at approximately 11.50 a.m., I, Investigator Wendy Baldwin, of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, made contact with Blank at her residence of 6904 County Highway Y. Prior to this date, I had spoken to Blank on the telephone and had agreed to meet with her at her house on this date and time to discuss the incident with Stephen Avery. Prior to talking to Blank about the incident, I explained to Blank that I would be tape recording the interview for her welfare as well as mine, so there wouldn't be any discrepancies on what she said or what I said in the future. Blank agreed to tape recording the interview. During my conversation with Blank, she did admit that Stephen Avery had forced sexual intercourse on her in the summer months of 2004. Blank did go into detail on what occurred during the incident and had told me that she never agreed to sex and had told Stephen no. Blank said Stephen had physically forced her hands over her head and had penis-to-vagina intercourse with her. Prior to this incident and after, Blank also informed me that there were many threats made against her. She said that Stephen would threaten to harm her, her mom, and her dad, and burn their house down if she did not do what he asked her to do. She said that varied from meeting him someplace to going to the store with him. Blank said after quite a length of time of this occurring, she grew very sick of how he was treating her and how he acted around her. Blank stated she would tell Stephen numerous times that he could not act that way around her and that she was his niece and Stephen would tell her that it was meant to be and that they would get married someday because she was not his biological niece. Blank also said she is very afraid of Stephen if he were to get out on bond and had already informed her manager that she would not work alone at her job at night if Stephen was out on bond. Blank said she is very scared of Stephen. Blank stated, after the incidents that happened between the two of them, she was paranoid being home alone and feared that Stephen may retaliate or try to harm her. Prior to the conclusion of my interview, I asked Blank if there was more than one occasion that Stephen had had sexual intercourse with her. Blank said no, it was just the one time. I informed Blank that if she had anything else to tell me about Stephen Avery or the relationship they had, she could contact me. I provided my business card to her. The interview was concluded at approximately 12.40 p.m. The tape of the interview will be transcribed and a copy will be attached to this report. Page 362, Investigator Wendy Baldwin, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 362. 363. Type of activity, interview of blank. Date of activity, 01-2706. Reporting officer, investigator, Wendy Baldwin. Investigator Baldwin. Well, I'm just going to let you start talking, all right? What do you want to tell me? Blank. I don't know. My mom said that you told her like four people told you I had sex with Stephen. Investigator Baldwin. Mm-hmm. Blank. No, I can tell you one thing that, yeah, he forced me to have sex with him. Investigator Baldwin. Okay. Blank. And I didn't want to. Investigator Baldwin. Okay. Blank. And he was like, well, he would tell me things like, if you don't do this, I'm going to hurt you. If you don't do this, I'm going to set your house on fire. Or that I might hurt your dad. Or if you don't do this, that I was going to... Investigator Baldwin, what kind of what kind of things did he mean by if you don't do this? Can you give me an example? Like, 
you said, if you don't do this, I'm going to set your house on fire. Do you remember what that was exactly you had to do? Or he would blank. I think it was the one time that he wanted me to meet him in Manitowoc. Investigator Baldwin. Okay. Blank. And I was like, I can't. I got, I'm staying home tonight. He was like, well, meet me in Manitowoc. Tell your dad that you have to do something. You have to go to a store. I was like, I was just at the store the other day. And he goes, well, tell them that you need to get something at Walmart. I was like, okay, whatever. Because then he would say, he told me that if I didn't meet him there, that he was going to hurt me. And I was like, you can't hurt me. Investigator Baldwin. How, how would he... Did he threaten how he would hurt you or blank? Page 364, blank. No, he would just say that he would hurt me. Investigator Baldwin, would hurt you? Blank, yeah. He said he would hurt my dad or he would hurt my mom and I didn't want, I didn't want them to get hurt. Investigator Baldwin, right, right. Blank. And then there was a couple times that he told us that, or told me, that if I didn't do something that he wanted me to do, that he would set our house on fire and that we'd have nothing. And then, Investigator Baldwin, did you believe him? Blank. Yeah. Investigator Baldwin. Or were you scared of him? Blank. Because he's pretty scary. Investigator Baldwin. Yeah. Blank. I, dog barking. Didn't like him, Investigator Baldwin. Yeah, I can see why. And are you still scared of him to this day? Blank. Oh, yeah. Investigator Baldwin. Yeah. Blank. Especially when I heard he was going to get out. I was like, Dad, I'm not going nowhere by myself. Investigator Baldwin. I don't, I, I don't blame you. Blank. I even told my managers that I won't work alone if I knew he was out. Like now they have me working with somebody because I'm afraid that he could get out and that no one would tell me. Investigator Baldwin. Mm hmm. Page 365. Blank. So, Investigator Baldwin, when did this all start? Blank. Was it right after he got out of prison? Blank. No. Investigator Baldwin. No. Can uh, maybe a time frame? Blank. I would say probably, Investigator Baldwin, was it last year or the year before? Blank. About around like I was 17, Investigator Baldwin. Okay. Anything when you were 16? Blank. No. The only thing he would do is like, Investigator Baldwin, was he starting to come on to you then when you were still around 16? Blank. Kind of. I got freaked out because of him. Like every time I would sleep at my Aunt Barbara's house, he would always be over there. Investigator Baldwin. Mm hmm. Blank. I'm like, I came to see Aunt Barbara. Investigator Baldwin. Yeah, right. Blank. And he would be over there and he would just like play fight with me. And I was like, knock it off. And then he would just start. He would always be around all the time. And that's what freaked me out. The most. And then I started realizing, well, Investigator Baldwin does, blank, is he, he trying to do something or Investigator Baldwin? Right. And is that um, because, remember when you talked when you were at high school, okay, um, you made a couple of references to your Aunt Barbara's house um, that there was, he was trying to force himself on you. He would try to go underneath, you know, he was having contact with your skin, like underneath your bra and stuff. Is that when that was happening or was that, that after or both? I mean, did it happen before? Page 366, blank. He tried putting, Investigator Baldwin, he had sex with you or after or blank. Yeah, Investigator Baldwin. Okay. So he was, he was starting to come on to you prior to having sex with you. Blank. I don't know, but Investigator Baldwin, like forcing himself on you, that kind of stuff. Blank. Yeah. Investigator Baldwin. Okay. Kind of blank. And, and then he would like, er, then he would force me to have sex. He like unbuttoned my pants and I would put them 
back up. I'm like, what are you doing? And he goes, well, this is the way it's supposed to be. I'm like, no, it's not. I said, you're 42 years old and blah, blah, blah. And he was sitting there and doesn't matter. Doesn't age doesn't matter. Does age matter any other time? I was like, yeah. And he goes, well, you're not technically called my or you're not technically my niece. I was like, by papers? Yes, I am. Investigator Baldwin. Mm hmm. Blank. I said, just because I am not blood related doesn't mean like he wouldn't consider him my uncle. He said, I'm not your uncle. And then he got my Aunt Barbara to say a bunch of stuff like how, like how, like her boys sometimes kid around with it because I'm so close to them, her boys, that I would call them like my best friends and my cousins. Fisker Baldwin. Mm hmm. Blank. And then they used to kid around and say, well, you're not our cousin. I was like, oh, yes, or we are. And then they're like, oh, I'm just kidding. Investigator Baldwin. Okay, okay. Um, Where did some of this other stuff happen? Where, how many, how many times did he force sex on you? Blank, blank. Just once. Page 367. Investigator Baldwin, just once. Where was that at? Blank, because that's when I stayed. I stayed away then. Investigator Baldwin, okay. When, where was that? Blank. I think by my Aunt Barbara's house. I'm pretty sure it was by my Aunt Barbara's house. Investigator Baldwin, you're pretty sure it was? Blank. Yeah. Investigator Baldwin, was there, was it like down in the basement or in a bedroom or blank in? Investigator Baldwin, the living room, or do you remember? I know you don't like talking about this stuff, and I don't like bringing it back up for you, blank. Okay, I don't. It's it's hurtful stuff, blank. Yeah, my mom said it would be better if I would talk to you instead of keeping it in my head, because, Investigator Baldwin, it is, it is, in the long run, blank, it's going to be better, okay? This is one way of coping and dealing with it, okay? And moving on, all right? And... I'm I'm not going to make any promises to you, but I'm going to try and protect you as much as I can, okay? Blank. Uh-huh. Investigator Baldwin. I'm going to go out on a limb and keep this as quiet as it can be, okay? And protect you, okay? I don't want you to be hurt any more by this than you already were, okay? Um, can you can you try and remember the best that you can for sure? Was it at your Aunt Barbara's house? Blank. Yeah. But no one was there, though, Investigator Baldwin. No one? Why were you there at that particular time? Do you remember? Blank. Because I was going there to meet my Aunt Barbara there, but my Aunt Barbara didn't show up right at the time that she was going to be. Page 368. Investigator Baldwin. Okay, was that? Blank. Because I was going to go to town with her and get groceries and stuff. Investigator Baldwin. Okay. Was that pre-planned by Steve? Did he know that she wasn't going to be there or blank? I don't know. I just, I went there and he must have, he probably seen my car because it wasn't when he, he didn't get along with my family too well. Investigator Baldwin, mm -hmm. blank. And that's when he lived in the trailer house or Investigator Baldwin. Okay, blank. I think it was a trailer house or his eye shanty, one of the two. I don't know. Investigator Baldwin, okay, do you remember when it was, what time of year, summer, fall, do you remember, excuse me, do you, was it a couple of years ago, blank, I think it was in the summer, Investigator Baldwin, okay, so it wasn't last summer, it was the summer before, so maybe in 03, blank, it was like, I would say probably three or four months after my 17th birthday, Investigator Baldwin, okay, and you, blank, I don't know, Investigator Baldwin, and your birthday, your birthday's June, right, blank, yeah, Investigator Baldwin, June 17th, blank, 14th, page 369, Investigator Baldwin, 14th of 87, blank, yep, Investigator Baldwin, right, okay, so this maybe happened in June or July, blank, yep, Investigator Baldwin, of your 18 now, so it was in 03, right? Blank, 03, that would be three years ago, wouldn't it be? Oh, no, I just turned 
Investigator Baldwin, you just turned 18 this year. Blank. Right. Investigator Baldwin, in 04? Yeah, so it would have been 03, you turned 17. So, okay, I'm just trying to get a timeline here of what year you were looking at. Okay, um, as hard as it's going to be, can you describe what happened that day, what you were doing? You said you were going over by your Aunt Barbara to go shopping with her. Blank. Yeah. Investigator Baldwin. Okay. What well, what happened after that? You came inside. She wasn't there. You were just blank. Yeah. Investigator Baldwin. Kind of hanging out there waiting for her. Blank. Yeah. Usually the boys are there and they weren't. So I was sitting on the couch watching TV and my uncle Stephen came through the front door. Investigator Baldwin. Mm hmm. Blank. They have the deck in the front door. Investigator Baldwin, mm hmm blank. And he says, what are you doing here? I was like, I'm waiting for Aunt Barbara. Page 370, Investigator Baldwin, mm hmm blank. And then he kind of like got closer and closer to me. And before this, he would stick his hands up my shirt and I would just pull him away. Investigator Baldwin, right. Blank. And then he would be like, well, he said something about something about the bedroom. I was like, I don't want to go into the boys' room because I don't know. Boys stink. Investigator Baldwin. Yeah. Especially at the age they do. Blank. Yes. Investigator Baldwin. Yeah. Sweaty, stinky. Um, Do you remember what time of day it was? Blank. Not. It was. Investigator Baldwin. Afternoon, maybe? Blank. Like around the time that she would get home from work. Investigator Baldwin. Okay. Blank. Because she told me to meet her by her house. Investigator Baldwin. Okay. Blank. That she would be home at like whatever time she got home from work. Investigator Baldwin. Okay. Blank. I think it was like five-ish. Investigator Baldwin. Okay. Blank. And I don't know. He just pushed me down on the bed. And he held my arms down, and I said, you can't overpower me because you get me mad. I'll overpower you. Investigator Baldwin, what what bed did he push you down on? Blank. One of those bunk beds we have? All right, you guys, we're going to start our review on page 361. Now, this actually is going to be probably a pretty short review because it's uh, basically this read is all about Marie Avery. So on page 361, it says interview of blank. This is Marie Avery, and that is um, Stephen's brother, Earl, and his wife, Candy. It is their daughter. So Earl adopted Candy. I'm sorry, adopted Marie. Um, and so she is not born in Avery, but is adopted and legally in Avery. Um, it legally makes Marie Stephen's um, niece, but Stephen doesn't seem to think so. I have a lot of problems with this whole interview, to be honest, because of the fact that it would have happened in 2004. These events should have been wrapped up then. If something was going to happen against Stephen, if they had found enough evidence when Wendy Baldwin did this investigation, then why were charges not followed through then. So in light of the fact that the investigation trailed off and didn't go anywhere, um, and in light of the fact that Stephen claims to have love letters from Marie, and we have other witnesses such as Tammy um, Weber stating that Marie was coming over there when Stephen was there on purpose and so forth, mm, it looks pretty double-sided here that there was a lot going on, like a mutual thing for a while. Um, I understand that after the incident of the Halbach woman going missing, and then, you know, we're all the way into January of 06, they've already got Stephen in, in jail pending a trial, that he's being accused of murdering and dismembering a woman that a young woman at 18 um, would absolutely have her mind messed with this this would happen so what we're hearing here is obviously a one-sided story and anytime you get one-sided story um, and nothing to seriously back it up um, I take it I take it as part of the scenario so there are a couple things as we go through this read this week that do how do I put this 
it makes it impossible for everything that she states to have happened. However, I also look at it as she was still a minor. She was 17 years old. He was a grown man in his 30s. And even though he was in prison for most of those years and did not um, have a chance to form social bonds and stuff with society and understand how to behave, there's no excuse for a grown man in his 30s, um, especially if even though it's just a legal thing and not a blood thing, that's his niece. And I don't think that um, any of the family members were really excited that Stephen and Marie were having um, an affair. So we're going to go ahead. We're, we're talking about um, Marie Avery is being interviewed by Wendy Baldwin, and she's talking about an incident. She says, Marie says that he forced her to have sex one time. Um, she claims that he... Um, that she explained to him, hey, I'm your niece, but he would tell her it was meant to be and that they were going to get married someday because she wasn't his biological niece. All right. So when you have parents such as Barb Yonda and Earl and such where they're, where they're not, how do I put it? <sighs> I hate to be too judgmental because I'm not in their shoes. I wasn't part of their life, but Barb's own children have referred to Barb as having affairs while she was still married to um, Yonda. So she was having an affair with Scott Tadich, according to her kids, um, back in August of 2005. There was a lot of... Um, these teenagers were said to, the rumor is that they were hanging out at Barb's house while she was at work and there were no adult supervision. Not a good mix, I'm sure. So, but like I said, um, we can't base a lot off of what one side of the story is, but that is what Marie stated, is that she was being forced to have sex. And then Wendy goes through and she interviews Marie on all kinds of stuff here about what he would do and say. And, and Marie is claiming that he would threaten to burn their house down if she didn't go and do what he said, such as meet him at the store to help him buy things for his house and so forth. I'm not sure how much of it is true. Um, really, I have no way to judge this. So I'm just scrolling here because it, it it's all one-sided. And that's what the reviews are going to be because most of this interview is about a one-sided event, the tale of one-sided. Um, it is established that this was in 2004 that Wendy Baldwin was the investigator. Now, on page 370, the last page, um, Marie says, and I don't know, he just pushed me down on the bed and he held my arms down and I said, you, you can't overpower me because you get me mad and I'll overpower you. So it makes it sound like she felt like she had a choice in the matter right there that she's saying she'll overpower him and then she says um investigator baldwin says what what bed did he push you down on and she says one of those bunk beds we have but yet earlier she had said that she was at her aunt barb's so is she considering that she lives at barb's that she would say that that we have meaning bunk bed or that the avery's have all the same bunk beds i didn't quite understand that and that's about it for the review like i said with it being one-sided obviously it shouldn't have happened um in the first place being that she's 17 years old stephen should have absolutely known better um and it does provide that, uh, you know, in legal terms, it could have been considered statutory rape. So the complication is that did she not admit at the time during the investigation that they had sex in 2004? Because why would statutory rape um, charges not have been um, put against Stephen? But nothing, nothing came of it. So if the investigation was completed by Wendy Baldwin... At that time, and she's just now hearing after the Halbach uh, girl has gone missing and um, believed to be dead and murdered by Stephen. Now Marie's saying she was forced to have sex. Well, then we have a different situation. So I guess the question I have is, if this literally is the truth, that, that she was forced to have sex at 17 with Stephen, a grown man by him, why did Wendy Baldwin not charge Stephen with statutory rape? And that's where we're going to leave off. Thank you, guys, and we'll keep going. Well, 
<sighs> you know, this is not an easy read this week. I appreciate you staying with me. But in order to get to the truth, we sometimes have to dig through the bucket of crap. Um, unfortunately, I do believe that there would have been um, a lot of family reasons why um, they would want to frame Stephen. Um, that's definitely in this case, if we're talking about the homicide itself, is there a motive for Earl Avery, who's he is claiming that Stephen raped? Well, you guys, if you didn't do the crime, you shouldn't do the time. Thank you, and we'll see you again tomorrow.